Earl Scruggs didn't use roll patterns, but if you want to learn how to play bluegrass banjo, then your best bet is to learn and practice them. So today let's talk about why Earl didn't use roll patterns, but let's also talk about the five most common roll patterns that you should know, as well as how to use and practice them. Okay, let's get into these roll patterns, but first do me a huge favor and subscribe to this channel and like this video. You wouldn't believe how much that helps me make more of these videos, which I love doing. And if you do those two things, then stick around to the end of the video to find out how you could win some free banjo strings. And if you're interested in a bonus practice tip with each of my videos, or the tablature for all of my videos, or live streams, all kinds of content that you can't find here on YouTube, then you should go to patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert Banjo. That's where I post everything that you can't find here on YouTube. Anyway, if we're talking about bluegrass banjo, there are five roll patterns that make up the majority of what you'll hear from Earl and other bluegrass banjo players. So here are those five roll patterns as they're most commonly played. Okay, that's it. Now you know the five most common roll patterns in bluegrass. But if you stop watching this video now, I'm sorry to say those roll patterns are not going to magically turn into bluegrass. And that's because roll patterns are not what you use to play bluegrass. Roll patterns are something that you practice in order to develop the necessary technique and muscle memory to play bluegrass. And they're also a really great way of organizing all the information that we have in the bluegrass banjo language. The idea of roll patterns actually came after Earl Scruggs had developed his signature three-finger style. It's only now, after the foundational language has been written, that we use the term roll patterns to describe what's already been played. And if you condense the playing of Earl Scruggs into the most common right-hand patterns, then you'll have, for the most part, these five rolls. And we do that because in order to learn and analyze this music, it can be really helpful to have a system for organizing the information. It's the same reason that we have names for notes and chords, otherwise known as music theory. Most music isn't written using music theory, per se, but if we want to learn about, or teach, or emulate that music, then it can be really helpful to say, this sound is created by playing this chord, and then that chord. It's really just a way of storing and describing information. So when we think about roll patterns, let's not think about using rolls to play bluegrass. Let's think about it as a way of describing some of the information that we're going to be seeing when we learn bluegrass. To illustrate this, let's look at some examples directly from Earl. For instance, you wouldn't really hear Earl play this. But you'll find that roll pattern in this lick that he plays all the time. And you wouldn't really hear Earl play something like this. But you'll find that roll pattern in this lick that he uses all the time. And if you look at any tablature of Earl Scruggs, or really any bluegrass banjo player, you'll find these roles embedded in the things that they play, in both backup and solos. And when it comes time to learn and memorize some of this music, it's going to be a lot easier to digest a few roll patterns that you've seen many times before, instead of, say, a hundred individual notes. Okay, so now you know the five roll patterns, and why it can be so helpful to look at bluegrass banjo through the lens of roll patterns. But if you stop watching this video now, I'm sorry to say you're not going to be quite ready to use this information to play bluegrass. What we need is a plan for practicing all of this, turning these roles, which aren't bluegrass, into ways that we can get better at playing bluegrass. And as usual, the best course of action is to practice these roles slowly at first with a metronome. And if you want to know more about that, then you can check out my metronome practice lesson. But the reason we want to do this is to build up some muscle memory so that when we come across a pattern like this in one of the songs that we're learning, we're actually going to be prepared already. And ideally, in that situation, 
we'll be able to put our right hand on autopilot and focus a little more on what our left hand is going to be doing. One of the interesting things about bluegrass banjo is that you'll find that there are a lot of different licks that use the same roll patterns, and the variation comes with your left hand. So if you can sort out your right hand, then you're going to be covered for a lot of the things that you're going to see in bluegrass banjo. And I'll also say that practicing rolls with a metronome is a really great way to warm up for the rest of your practicing, or a jam, or a gig. It's something that I still do on a regular basis. And at the same time, you want to start learning songs or tunes from a teacher, or from tablature, or maybe a video lesson. Maybe one that you can find online, like the videos that I post, or one of the many thousands of videos available on YouTube. Because bluegrass really exists in these tunes and songs, especially in versions played by some of the banjo greats like Earl Scruggs or J.D. Crow. And as you learn these songs, it can be really helpful to look for the roll patterns that we've talked about today, because it's going to give you some structure and organization where otherwise there might not really be any. And in particular, look out for roll patterns that are happening on unusual combinations of strings. For what it's worth, roll patterns aren't really about what strings you're playing, it's really about the order of your right hand fingers. For instance, sometimes you might come across a forward roll played on these strings. That's a surprisingly difficult thing to play if you're not used to it, so obviously you're going to want to spend some time playing it slowly until it's comfortable. But I do think that thinking about that as a forward roll actually makes it a little bit easier to play, because your right hand is used to playing things in that order. So when you think about these roll patterns, really think about the fingers that you're using. For instance, a forward roll would be thumb, index, middle, and a backward roll would be middle, index, thumb but you don't necessarily have to play those on any particular set of strings. You could even play that on just one string. So with all of that said, now you should spend some time with these roll patterns and spend some time learning some new tunes and songs and seeing if you can find those roll patterns embedded within them. All of this is to say that if you want to play bluegrass banjo, then you should spend some time doing things that bluegrass banjo players do. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful, and if you're still here, then I bet you're wondering how you could win some free banjo strings. And it's easy. All you have to do is comment below here on YouTube, not on Patreon, not on Facebook, here on YouTube. Just comment below how long you've been playing the banjo. And congratulations to Anthony, who is the winner of last week's string giveaway. So if you want to be a winner like Anthony, then make sure you comment below here on YouTube. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.